Hey everyone, in this video we're going to do uh, three different examples of actually using the auxiliary equation in practice. Um, and each of these examples is going to go through all the three different cases that we went over deriving in the last two videos. So let's get right into it. So this one, we can see that we've got a second order ordinary differential equation. Um, constant coefficients, it's homogeneous, so it's uh, got equal to zero on one of the sides. So this is in the indicative that we can use the um, auxiliary equation to solve this. Okay, so let's start. And you don't have to go th through this every single time, but I'd like to just go through it a little slower um, the first time just to make sure that we understand what exactly we're doing. So remember, we're assuming that y is going to take the form of y is equal to e to the rx, where r is just some constant, right? So second derivative or first derivative of this is r times e to the rx. Second derivative of y is r squared times e to the rx. And then we're going to plug this back in. Let me zoom in a little bit here for you. So we're going to plug this back into our ODE, and it will become r squared times e to the rx plus 3 times r e to the rx plus 6 times e to the rx. And this is all equaling 0. We can factor out our e to the rx, and we're left with r squared plus 3r plus 6 equals 0. We know e to the rx will equal 0, and r squared plus 3r plus 6 equals 0. We find no solutions from e to the rx equals 0. So we are going to solve this quadratic. OK, great. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have r must be equal to uh, negative 3 plus or minus square root of 9 minus 4a, and that's times uh, 6, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. So we get r equals, and you can probably already see this, that we are definitely going to get some complex roots underneath our square root here. right? b squared minus 4ac is a negative number. So we're going to go with uh, the, the first case where we have imaginary solutions. And so what, let's simplify this as much as we can. So this will be minus 3 over 2 plus or minus, And 9 minus 24 should be negative 15. So this will be plus or minus square root of 15 times our imaginary number i. OK? And if you'll remember, what we found out in the last video is that we know our solution will take the form of, and I'll, I'll write it out in a second, but if we had those two constants, alpha and beta. And if you remember, this first unit here is our alpha, and this second number there is our, oh, not alpha, this is our beta. And what we found was that the solution takes the form of y equals e to the alpha x and this is multiplied by cosine of beta x plus sine of beta times x. So now it's really as easy as just plugging in our alpha and our beta and this is the general solution because if you remember we already took the linear combination of both the solutions that we found. So this what we just wrote, this is the general form of the solution. We really just jump straight to this, and we're pretty much done. So this is e to the negative 3 over 2x times cosine of, oh, and this should be square root of 15 over 2. Don't forget that. That's just a mathematical error there, over 2. OK? cosine of square root of 15 over 2 times x plus sine of beta, so root 15 over 2 times x. And there you have it. This is the general solution to the ODE, this ODE right here.
right? Pretty easy. It's great. Auxiliary equations are super easy to use and super um, likely that you'll use them in lots of different uh, like math after ODEs. Okay, so let's do another example. This one, we've got 2y pr double prime minus 8y is equal to 0. Okay, so again, we got constant coefficients, homogeneous, uh, linear, like very indicative to use a auxiliary equation to solve this. And, you could, and for something like this, we only have two terms. You could use separation of variables if you'd like, but I'm showing you the power of auxiliary equations here, so that's what we'll use. So um, let's go through it once more um, really quickly. We know y is equal to e in the form of e to the rx. So y prime is uh, r times e to the rx. y double prime is equal to r squared e to the rx. So I'm just going to jump it, jump the gun a little bit here. If we factor out our e to the rx, once we plug everything in, we'll be left with 2 times r squared minus uh, 8. And this all equals 0. And we know that e to the rx equals 0 will give us no solutions. But we have 2 r squared minus 8 equals 0 as a solution as well. Okay. So what will this give us? We've got r squared equals 8 over 2, which is 4. So r1 will be plus 2, r2 will be minus 2. And this is super easy, right? Super easy one. Um, one of our solutions, call it y1, will be equal to, let's give it a constant, a times e to the r1 x, y2 would be equal to some constant b uh, times e to the negative 2 x. And remember, we're, we're doing the general solution here. So our general solution will be the linear combination of our two, uh, our two solutions that we find. So our general solution is a e to the 2x plus b e to the minus 2x where uh, a and b are both constants. And that's it for this case. Definitely the most straightforward. And we're going to do one final example. And this is just of the last case. So you can guess that our b squared minus 4ac is going to be equal to 0 in this case. So let's do this. OK. We, uh, we can, let, let's just jump to the auxiliary equation, right? Because I think it's pretty straightforward how we get there. So we know that the auxiliary equation is going to be equal to, so it's r squared because we've got a 1 here. We've got negative 2, so this will be minus 2r. And then on our uh, y term, we have 1, so this will be plus 1. So all this equals 0. So r is equal to minus negative 2. So positive 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that is 4 minus 4, 1 times 1. All of this is over 2 times 1. 4 minus 4, that's going to be 0. So our r is equal to 2 divided by 2. So r is equal to 1. And we already went through how to find the form of the solution when we only find one real root. And we know this, right? So now that we know this, it's super easy. All we'd say is that the general solution is uh, some constant, we'll call it c, times e to the r, which is 1, x, plus our other solution. So d, which is another constant, and this is going to be x times e to the r x, right? So I'll clean that up just a little bit. y is equal to c e to the x plus d x e to the x, where c and d are real numbers. And this is it. Super straightforward, super easy, super useful. I hope this video was helpful uh, understanding auxiliary equations and uh, how to use them in actual examples.